All right, so to hello to anyone and everyone who's watching this video. My name is Brian. I work in the Dean's Office in the Connie O'Leary College of Education at San Jose State University. And today I have the great pleasure of speaking with three students who recently won our Student Social Justice Short Film Festival. So we're here to learn a little bit more about each of them today. So I was wondering if we can each just start by introducing ourselves, by sharing our name, our pronouns, and then just a fun or interesting fact about each of us. I shared my name already, Brian. My pronouns are he, him. And I know I shared this with each of you in the email that I sent you, but a fun or interesting fact about me is that for three years, most recently, from 2016 to 2018, I decided not to have a cell phone and I'm still here. I live to tell the story. So uh, people find that kind of weird, but yeah, you know, it was an interesting experiment to take on, I guess, anyway. So I was wondering if each of you could just introduce yourselves to whoever is watching this. Maybe we can start with Natalie. Hi, my name is Natalie Creek. My pronouns are she, her. And over the summer, um, due to quarantine, I taught myself how to skateboard, longboard, and how to edit videos. Awesome. It sounds like a really fun and productive summer. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice to meet you officially, and thanks for introducing yourself. Jose, do you want to introduce yourself next? Absolutely. My name is Jose Flores Jimenez. My pronouns are he, him. And an interesting fact about me would be, uh, <laughs> A little unprepared though I am, uh, I am in drama. I have been involved in drama for the last four years and it's all culminated right now to this production that is actually happening two days from as of when this is being recorded. Uh, and it's been a production that I've been heavily involved with in the editing and the, uh, and kind of the, the directing. So that's a very exciting thing and, and you know, went along with this. So that's been a lot of fun. Awesome, yeah, it does sound like it's pretty exciting, especially to be part of such a like a big, project, like you said, has been building up to this moment. So wish you all the best and hopefully it's a, it's a success later this week. And nice to meet you too, officially. And Vincent, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Vincent. Uh, I use they, he pronouns and I am an undergrad student at San Jose State. A fun fact about me would probably be that I really like digital design. So anything techie, I'm probably like experimenting with, whether it be like websites or like um, making videos and stuff like that. Cool, I'm the same way. So that definitely resonates with me. And obviously I already know you from other initiatives that we've been a part of, but good to see you as always. So next I was thinking what we could do is watch each of your videos together as a group. Uh, Cause I, I mean, I'm happy to rewatch them of course for, I don't know how many times now I've watched them, but um, I just thought it'd be nice for us to, you know, one, just recognize each of your videos individually since you were the winners for your age groups, um, and then just have each of you talk about them a little bit. So let me go ahead and share my screen here and get that queued up. So you should be able to see the Social Justice Film Festival webpage right now. Is that correct? I see some yes. nodding. Okay, awesome. Uh, yep, so just for those of you who are watching, we're going to the uh, Connie O'Leary College of Education website here, sjsu.edu slash education slash community slash film hyphen festival. That's also a mouthful. So that takes us to our webpage here where we have each of our winners' videos highlighted. So we'll start with Natalie's video here. Um, I'm going to start playing it, and then if you each can tell me if the, the volume level is okay, I adjusted it a little bit right before we got started. Is that okay? Is it too loud? Too not loud enough? It's okay. Okay, cool. So let me backtrack it and full screen it, and we'll go ahead and give it a watch. The case before the court is the People versus President Donald Trump. Prosecutor. Can you state the charges? Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, the list of wrongdoings by the defendant is quite long. Would you like me to read them all? We don't have time for all that. Just pick two. Okay, let me look this over. Here we go, Your Honor. We'll go with charge of theft. Theft? Yes, Your Honor. The defendant's denial of climate change and withdrawal from the Paris Agreement will effectively steal the future of this generation. Okay, the charge is theft. Are you ready to proceed? Wait, your honor. What's the problem? The science related to climate change is very involved. It would take weeks to hear the testimony of all those experts. 
We don't have that kind of time. Yes. However, the president himself has access to all of these experts and I'm sure has been fully briefed. Therefore, he himself can provide the information we wish to present to the court. I have advised my client not to testify. Hmm. I can't compel the defendant to testify. Do you have any other ideas? Yes, Your Honor, I do. We would like to call our first witness, former President Barack Obama. Hi, everybody. Mr. President, during your term as president, were you briefed regarding the situation of climate change? Yes, multiple times. And who provided these briefings? The briefings were provided by the Pentagon experts who had consulted top climate change scientists and analysts. And did these experts include that climate change is real? Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. And did these Pentagon experts conclude that climate change poses a threat to our future? That would be an understatement. An understatement? Could you explain? They concluded that climate change, if not abated, will cause widespread environmental damages. And would those environmental damages adversely affect the fabric of our society as well as our national security? Yes, in many ways. So would you say that when President Trump denies the very reality of climate change, he condemns us to inaction and therefore condemns our generation to suffering these effects? That would be a fair conclusion. All right. Well, thanks so much, Natalie, for creating that video and sharing it with us for this film festival. Uh, I was wondering if you can talk a little about why, what, what was it that motivated you to create that film and specifically focus on the topic of climate change? Uh, well, it actually had a little bit to do with timing because when I saw the posting for the film festival, I just read a script called Trump on Trial by Gary Rowlandson, and um, it motivated me to apply and um, I talked to Mr. Rowlandson and he gave me permission to use his script as inspiration to make my own um, film. And I also really just loved the whole theme of the festival and it made me want to enter. So yeah. Cool, thanks so much. It's always nice just to learn a little bit more and get a little bit more depth around you know, what was kind of driving you um, behind that. And I was wondering if each of our other winners, Jose and Vincent, if you, uh, as you were watching that, if you can comment on like, what was it that stood out to you or what's kind of a takeaway that you're getting from Natalie's film? Uh, I, I could say things, of course, I have nothing prepared, but I always like to just uh, kind of talk about what, what, what I think. And uh, definitely something that stood out about Natalie's film uh, was, was uh, how much I, I see this now more among uh, our, our younger, um, the, the younger people, uh, they're paying so much more attention to climate change. And I think that that's definitely not something, at least, you know, when I was a middle schooler, that was definitely not something that we found pressing. And of course, I'm only talking about four years ago, um, but I thought uh, that, that that's, that's very interesting because obviously this has been a year of, of many, many problems. Uh, I, for one, you know, perhaps was not paying, paying the most attention to climate change of all things. But I do think, uh, and I really love that that was something that was being brought up and reminded of. And I'm, I'm really glad that that's one of the topics that uh, made it as a winner for this, uh, for this film festival. Cause I thought, no, that's really, really important. And right before everything that was happening, you know, the torment that was or became 2020, uh, climate change was a, was a very, very important uh, thing, especially, you know, thinking back to Greta Thunberg, um, you know, everyone was talking about it for a while and then it started dying down. I'm glad it doesn't die down with this festival. Because, you know, obviously it's incredibly important for everyone, the whole globe. Yeah, thank you for sharing your thoughts, Jose. Um, personally, when I was watching that video, I thought it was um, really awesome. You know, your acting was flawless. And I really loved how you tied the whole message together with your script and like, you know, the set, it just really matched together and the tone you set through the video as well. And one thing that really stood out to me was, you know, like 
the point Jose made that, you know, we should be still talking about climate change, that it is still happening. And um, that even though it's been losing momentum, we still need to, you know, as the next generation, bring it up again and again and again until like something, you know, gets done. Because, you know, there's so many things that are happening in the world right now that um, sometimes we can forget like certain things, but um, it's really important. And I really like how you highlighted that. And what I really like your ending message where you just tied it all together. And it was just really cool to have like the narration aspect. So like when you were like talking to the narrator and back and forth, like I just really like that conversational flow because that means like you can have those other type of conversations with people, you know, outside of your video, like in the rest of the world. So that's really awesome. Yeah, thanks to you both for your additional input. Um, I agree with you, Jose. I mean, there's there's definitely been, I mean, there's always so many social justice issues that need to be touched upon and advocated for. And I think this year in 2020, there's just been a convergence of so many of those happening with so much intensity all at the same time. And that was part of the reason we wanted to have this film festival to begin with was we really wanted to hear from students at all different grade levels. Like what are the, the issues that are really important to you and what is it that you all wanna advocate for um, and, and, and you know, try to change uh, for the future. And then to your point, Vincent, yeah, I definitely agree. This is a, a creative way to deliver that message and, and keep a conversation going. And I think as we watch all three of your videos, it's just interesting to see that the different creative approaches that each of you took in delivering your messages. So with that, we'll transition next to watching Jose's video. So let me go ahead and screen share again before I mute myself. There we go. Uh, all right, so we'll open the web page back up. Jump down here and volume looks okay. All righty. Four long years brought us here. And for what, I ask myself. You know, I really thought we could have had a change of heart. Some lesson learned or something to talk about. And don't get me wrong, we have plenty to talk about. But what would you know about listening? In the end, what greater gift could I ask for than to see you ascend? It has been four long years since you made my blood out as not the best. Still four years later, you call the West an alien's nest. But let's assume I come from the good ones. What good is that to a young dependent? Untaught affection for independence, meanwhile families face a death sentence? Your words, inflicting hate and pouring love, but love, mind you, for your side. Supremacy by any other name would wreak the same as your pride. Don't make this about race, they say, as they cuff feet at the relay. Back and forth, our heartstrings pulled in this tug of war for what we know should have been done. I'm done. Let's talk now. I'd like to think you're listening, so let's talk about them. Them. Or what's left. What remains are frightened parents whose soul and culture are left to die. What comes next are fed up children on the cusp of their goodbye. I mean, what becomes of them if I grow up? What promises could you keep? They once admired this country more greatly than children now, it seems. Their childhoods were Spanish dubs of a dream they fell in love with. They currently reside with wishes, now secrets lost to a monolith. You've turned Mexican into a dirty word, and still you say you love them. I just kind of wish you meant it, man. Instead of drawing out walls with your pen. So in the end, Ascend. Notice I'm not asking you to burn, I said ascend. And I'm not wishing death upon you, it'll happen in the end. But I do ask you, listen to one more thing, my friend. They serve a greater purpose than to serve as your cheap labor. They provide good lives, at least they did me that favor. You left them out to die in this pandemic and it shows. God cannot forgive that without some remorse. So make ends meet with him and do me a favor. In the end, ascend, and then stay there. All right, so 
Thank you to Jose also for submitting your film to this festival. Really appreciate it. I was wondering if you can talk a little more about what inspired you to create that film and what you're hoping people to get to take away from it. Um, so many different issues that you touched upon there, ethnicity, nationality, and beyond. So go for it. Absolutely. Um, so I should say that first of all, uh, I, I do uh, preface it at the beginning with uh, the title and I say recorded on September 8th, 2020. And the reason I thought that, that was important at the time was because uh, I posted and submitted, uh, I think it was the day after we had heard that uh, our president uh, was diagnosed with, uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, and so obviously one of the themes that I'm touching upon with, with uh, this, what is essentially a monologue is uh, I'm kind of saying, I'm not wishing that you die, Mr. President, uh, but when you do, I hope that you can, you know, make amends and to, to all this wrong that you've done. And when you do die, may you go to heaven because that means that maybe you fix something. Uh, which, you know, there's a, a there there is perhaps double entendre. I I could, you know, but I, I'd rather leave that up for interpretation. Uh, but uh, what was so pressing to me about it at the time was um, he might, you know, we were all kind of scared and it was uncertain at the time whether or not he might or might not. Um, and I, I thought, okay, I should just make sure people know because I wanted to submit for this um, as a classic senior would. I procrastinated for a little bit and I thought, no, this is it. I need to turn it in now. Uh, what I, so when I recorded it for uh, the September 8th uh, that I did, it, it was for our um, a drama project, with, which is what we call our autobiographical monologues. Um, I, I should apologize. I didn't mean to make my lighting so dramatic, but uh, behind me, there's a bit, a, bit, a bit of a mess, so we'll just go along with it. Uh, there's also birds behind me, so if you hear those, that's me. Um, it, the autobiographical monologue assignment project, uh, every year since I've been in advanced drama, we have to make a monologue based on something about ourselves. Uh, and I've always kind of touched upon, you know, since my first year doing that, I've made these monologues about what it's like growing up Hispanic in San Jose while, this pre while we have this administration. Um, and, and I've carried, you know, I've written about things that are about me in the past. And I wanted to write one that was really about the immigrants that, that have raised me uh, and the ones that I've grown up with uh, and how they have not been um, properly addressed by the federal government in terms of, of, you know, stimulus checks or any kind of help uh, in terms of, of getting the right treatment, uh, the, la the Latino community, Latinx, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call that, you know, my blood, my family. I, I, I see that as more than that. They have been the most affected, um, you know, nationally. That's all I've heard by what I've seen. They have been. And, and I wanted to make something that was uh, calling strictly help them, please because they've done so much for me, the least we can do is something for them right now. Uh, I think if there's one thing I really want people to take away with, it's something that my mother pointed out to me was I'm, I'm giving a very strong direct message to Mr. Trump himself. Uh, and, and I wanted to do it in such a way that it would not be vulgar. It would not be too aggressive. It would be something that hopefully more than just people who are interested in social justice issues, but just, you know, interested in other perspectives, will be able to listen to and respect and not have to think, oh, that was really extreme or anything. We've not been heard of uh, a lot, I think. And I think if, if, if people can just listen and understand, you know, we're not, we, I don't want to go about it angry and with pitchforks. Um, so please just give us a chance, to hear us out. That's about it. Thank you for sharing those insights. Um, yeah, I agree. It was a very strong and direct message. And I think what what's really uh, captivating, I think, for your uh, film and Natalie's film too, is obviously you're, you're both talking about these different issues, but that have a lot of histories behind them. But then you're talking about them in this very specific moment in time too, and that's kind of captured in each of your films. Um, and I'm feeling the dramatic lighting on your end. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I like it. So go for it. Um, Natalie and Vincent, I was wondering if you can chime in with what stood out to you with Jose's film. I think something that really stood out to me from Jose's film was not only his, you know, really powerful message, but the way you delivered your message was really powerful. It added on to, you know, 
the content that you were giving, like the way you were making it really personal, you were holding the camera, you were pulling it in. And I felt like it was like you were pulling these people into your message. And I felt really pulled in, like, as a viewer, I was like, yeah, like, this is something really important to you. I could tell it was something really pressing to you. And, you know, like every like person we like everyone has their like important identities and this identity is really salient to you. And it was just really powerful to be able to, you know, like not only understand, you know, how much care and concern you have for your community, but how much the rest of our community should also be allies and, you know, care about, you know, the Latinx uh, community as well. So I felt really touched by that. And I think you did a really effective way of delivering it in a way that wasn't like, you know, like hateful, but it was getting the message out. And I really appreciated that that touch because I felt like you know like some people when you know like you responded in like an angry way they get like really angry and um but I felt like you were just opening the door for dialogue and I feel like you know like this could be a really great piece to share out with a lot of different people to be able to start that conversation yeah um like what she said um the way that you just performed it was absolutely amazing but um, something that really stood out to me was that um, you kept saying the word ascend instead of descend, even though a lot of people are thinking that right now, that dislike Trump. And I felt like it, it made it so much more respectful and so much more honorable. And then, um, yeah, I just felt like the whole thing was overall extremely meaningful. Oh, and then I also really, really love the line where he talks about how um, Trump, he hates Mexicans and he wants to get them out of the country, but then, um, he also says he loves them when voting time, time comes around just to get more votes. And I felt like that was so meaningful and just the way you performed it was absolutely amazing. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thanks to you both for your additional insights and input. Um, Natalie, I think you meant to say they or he when referring to Vincent, but no worries, that's okay. I just wanted to point that out. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, no worries. Just wanna make sure we're addressing everyone by our pronouns. Um, so to finish things off, we will go ahead and screen Vincent's film now. So let me go ahead and screen share here. Uh, we'll do one more here. All right. And make sure the volume's you know, okay. Yep, full screen. All right. You know, with so much going on in the world right now, I wanna do something about it, but they won't believe us, right? We're too young. What are you talking about? We're not too young. Yeah, you know what people always say about young people? Yeah, but age shouldn't matter. Anyone can make an impact. They tell us we're too young, they want us being different, but how can we remain silent when there's injustice, violence, year 2020, through more than 20. COVID-19 changed life as we know it, leaving people tense with no direction, challenging our sense of human connection, creating more walls, closing more doors, uncertainty. Not sure what's in store. COVID-19 lockdown, economic downfall, anti-mask resistance, questioning our existence, lack of public health regulation, daily bells of frustration. Society, still we are fighting for the same dream. Now together as a team, educate humanity, create more opportunity, build our communities, remain true to our identities. A generation of activism, stand against the oppression, advocate for collective liberation. Gotta change the system, gotta make it undone. Gotta change the status quo, we can't take it anymore. Gotta change the system, gotta make it undone. Gotta change the status quo, we can't take it anymore. Oh, 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 oh. one thing that you can do. What? Everything seems like too much to handle. Go vote. Use your voice because you too can make a difference. Global pandemic, climate change, systemic discrimination, together we stand as allies. Hand in hand. We're the next generation gonna take action to shape our future nation. And we're moving for a change. Wonder what it's gonna take when our well-being is at stake. We must not excuse civil wrong. We're just trying to move on. Gotta change the system, gotta make it undone. Gotta change the status quo, we can't take it anywhere. Gotta change the system, gotta make it undone. Gotta change the status 
All right. So Vincent, you took a little bit more of a zoomed out approach, I think, uh, in, in your film. So I was wondering if you could talk a little about what motivated and inspired you for that and what you were hoping people would take away from it. Yeah. So just for context, this video was created in October, like mid-October-ish. And since most of the participants in the video is like and are college students at the time, a big issue that was pressing our minds was definitely, you know, like voting, like as like, oh, like we should get out there and vote as college students because college students, this might be their first election voting. And as for the context of that video, um, I wrote out a script and I was kind of taking a songish kind of rapish approach because I wanted it to um, feel kind of personal, but in a way like relevant to um, society and the culture right now. And I felt like by doing rap and I really love rap music, like it really made a personal connection, not only to me, but also it's also open to interpretation as well in terms of lyrics and how people take it. So it, you know, creates some um, flexibility in that. And I took a Zoom approach kind of thing because I think it's really relevant for 2020 to be able to like, you know, kind of unite people together for that unifying message, but also, you know, like having that context is like, this is the year we're going to remember as being on Zoom or like being distantly apart, but still together in spirit and together in action. So um, that's why it was really important to take that approach, but also to amplify different people's voices. So although I had a script in place, I did let my friends um, look over their portion to see if there was anything that they wanted to adapt or adjust to make more sense to um, what they're really passionate about as well. So like there was some um, flexibility in that and it gave like different perspectives to amplify different people's voices. So that was the approach I was trying to take. Awesome. Yeah, I like the group effort and the, you had the direct call to action in there just saying, you know, go vote. You were speaking to a, you know, a specific audience with that. And uh, there's so many things that say 2020 and Zoom is definitely one of them or being in like video chat boxes is, <laughs> is definitely one of them. So glad you captured that in there too. Natalie and Jose, what was it that stood out to you with Vincent's film? <laughs> okay, I'll take it then. Um, I really, like you say, um, Vincent, that it was it was very personal for you to, to approach it through rap. And I could kind of, I mean, I felt like I could kind of tell watching the video because I don't feel like many people would go through all that effort uh, if they didn't really feel passionate about about music. And I thought that that uh, was such a fun and creative way of going about it. Uh, along with that, um, I thought it was fantastic getting to see other people. Uh, you know, obviously you have this diversity on your gallery view chorus uh, and, and that was really fun to watch. Uh, and I, I thought, you know, overall the song was really fun. And uh, I like how you did not restrict yourself to any one thing. Um, you know, as I feel music really allows for and you took advantage of that. So for that, uh, I say congratulations and kind of thank you, because uh, that was a really nice uh, piece to, to, you know, be put along with for, for this film festival. Um, I really like the, the lyrics uh, and just hearing how you gave other people the liberty to change and, and uh, give, gave your collaborators a uh, creative liberty. Uh, that's also something that uh, you know, just, just hearing about that, that's really cool. So uh, th those things stand out to me. Yeah, thank you for sharing your thoughts, Jose. I actually found the beat on SoundCloud and I thought it was just really fitting. Uh, yeah, um, it was absolutely amazing. I loved how you incorporated music and rap into it. Um, and I felt like it made it so much more touchy and entertaining. And so I thought that was awesome. And then I also liked how you really focus on how everyday people have a voice and um, that we all need to stand up as a country if we wanna make change. And um, I think we need to. And then 
uh, you also summarize the ending, like the whole, you summarize what the entire thing is about in the end on the screen. And I feel like when you put words on a screen, it makes it so much more personal and it makes it so much more um, impacting. So I really love that. Awesome. Thanks to you both for providing some additional inputs on, on what you got from Vincent's film. And again, thank you to all three of you for creating your films and, and wanting to be a part of this film festival and congratulations on uh, your recognition uh, for winning each of the three levels for middle school, high school and college. So just to close out, I was wondering if each of you can share what your future hopes, dreams, goals are with regards to continuing to speak out on social justice issues as we move forward. Whoever wants to go first, go ahead and jump in. Well, um, I hope I can get the film out to Georgia uh, for people who are doing the recount. And then um, I also, uh, I, I'm taking speech and debate this year, hoping to go into a profession that can make a difference in this world. And then I'm also planning on using the new equipment to make more films, um, promoting things that we really need to change about this world and that are really important. Um. I am, uh, I consider myself an aspiring filmmaker um, because that is definitely something that I'm really passionate about. Obviously I saw a film festival and I said, absolutely. Uh, because I, I, you know, I've been uh, aware or at least I feel that I've noticed uh, downtown San Jose and especially around San Jose state, there is a small but thriving uh, filmmaking community uh, and so I really want to be a part of that and a part of, of this, uh, I'm becoming more aware of some small, uh, small filmmakers uh, from San Jose. I feel like it's, it's going to become a, a, a very important uh, epicenter to the Bay Area for uh, that kind of voice. I want to contribute to that, um, you know, going into, in my mind, I want to become a filmmaker that um, not just approaches my own community, but really tries to approach and though as pretentious as it may sound, all artists say this at some point, uh, really approach the human condition uh, and, and, and go about it in, in ways that, that uh, uh, can speak to more than one group of people's hearts. Uh, so my dream is to become a director, a filmmaker, uh, and also a writer. Um, and, and so what I'm doing to do that, if you want something more like future projects, uh, I have a, a script that is about my family, I guess my sister's uh in in quarantine uh it's like what their life is if i was not here how i think they would go about things uh so that 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 is hopefully the, the next project that i will be starting uh once this semester school uh once the semester ends for school For me, I consider myself an aspiring educator. So I wanna go into the field of education in the future. I'm not quite sure where I wanna work um, specifically yet in terms of um, higher ed or um, secondary education. So like either high schoolers or college students, but um, I'm gonna educate myself more on, you know, civic leadership and how I can take action in the local community and get more involved in um, that because I think that's really important to, you know, continuously always be open to learning and growing as an educator because then you can you know like teach that to future students and you know teach them to be inclusive teach them to be you know aware of their surroundings and teach them to challenge the world so that they can create a world that's more accepting and inclusive for everyone so that's my kind of goals for the future they're pretty broad and um i'll just see whenever i get there um <laughs> yeah awesome well it's so great to hear like kind of what your immediate next steps are that you see for yourselves and then kind of more long-term goals that you have for yourselves and how those things are connected to you personally, academically, professionally and whatnot. So it's really exciting to hear. And I would just say, just keep going, just whatever, whatever you're doing, just keep going in the direction that you're going in. Uh, I would say for us from the college's standpoint, one uh, hope and dream and goal that we have is that we do want to make this an annual film festival. So we're hoping that next fall we can have this uh, happen again. Hopefully, you know, our society will be in a much different situation <laughs> at this point next fall, although I'm sure a lot of the issues that you all um, spoke out on will still be relevant in some form or fashion. Um, so I want to congratulate you all again for being hopefully the first of our many film festival winners if this becomes an annual thing. Um, and you all just created such great examples, I think, for um, 
this film this film festival to have going forward you know if we do have it again next fall for people to kind of refer to and use as kind of a, a baseline or a point of reference to think about how they want to speak out upon uh, other social justice issues that are important to them so thanks so much <laughs>